Correct exposure is one of the most important factors for high quality footage and photos with the DJI Mini 4 Pro or other drones or camera. In this video I will show you all you need to know in order to constantly nail exposure. The techniques and the tools for exposure are basically the same for footage and for photos. But in the case of photos, everything is much simpler, for several reasons. With still images, we have a much larger latitude of choice for the value of shutter speed, while for video we cannot use a value lower than the frame rate. As an example, when shooting video at a frame rate of 24 frames per second, we cannot use a value slower than 1 over 25 seconds. Also with footage, in certain conditions, we should try to respect the 180 degree rules by maintaining a certain ratio between the shutter speed value and the frame rate, as I will explain later on. When shooting video, we should also consider the possible differences in luminosity during the clip, while for photos, this is obviously not an issue. To get the best result, by far the most important factor is the choice of the light conditions. The central hour of a sunny day are to be avoided at all costs, as the shadows are extremely harsh and the contrast too strong. There are good reasons why it is said that these are the hours when photographers and videographers sleep. For centuries, painters and photographers have tried to control the quality of the light in their studio by carefully choosing the position of the windows and the distance from walls, acting like reflectors. In more recent times, reflectors and diffusers have been widely used for two purposes, avoiding strong highlights and achieving shadows as soft as possible. Excellent light conditions for videos and photos are in the two hours around sunrise or sunset, more or less the one known as golden hour and blue hour. Another possibility is when the sun is covered by cloud, acting like a big soft box. The idea is to reduce the dynamic range and have a small difference in luminosity between the highlights and the shadows. My favorite time is about half an hour after sunset, with the last twilight acting as the fade light and the artificial lights as the main source. The histogram is the only tool I use for exposing. It tells us a lot about the light condition of a scene. When the bar touches the right edge, the image will be overexposed. This is something to be avoided at all times, as burned highlights cannot be recovered while editing. For this reason, I always make sure to leave a gap between the last bar to the right and the right edge of the histogram, so that the highlights are preserved. When a few bars touch the left edge of the histogram, the shadows will be too dark but it will be possible to recover them during post-processing, up to a certain extent. But when too many bars are bunched up against the left edge, the shadows will be too dark, contain less information, and it will be hard or impossible to recover them. When most of the bars are in the middle of the histograms, and there are gaps both to the right and the left sides, the image has low contrast. These are the easiest conditions for correct exposure and correspond to the best hour of the day mentioned earlier. It will be simple to add a bit of contrast while editing for excellent results. When the bars touch both the right and the left edges of the histogram, it is a high dynamic range scene. 
in most cases containing the sky and the camera pointing in the direction of the sun. These are the most difficult situations. It is again suggested to leave a small gap to the right of the histogram to preserve the highlights. The shadows will be very dark, but on certain occasions it will be possible to recover them, at least partially. This is why it is suggested that beginners avoid shooting footage or photo in the direction of the sun. An alternative possibility is to avoid burning the highlights and leave the elements on the ground as a silhouette, which can create an interesting effect on certain occasions. In the camera tab of settings, there is another tool to aid exposing, overexposure warning. It works by overlaying black and white diagonal stripes to the overexposed part of a scene. I never use it, as I find it very distracting, and the histogram is all that I need for exposing. The small icon at the bottom right of the screen toggles between auto and manual exposure. In auto mode, the exposure is set by the software. We can only access the EV value to adjust the overall luminosity. I find that the software tends to slightly overexpose, therefore I prefer to set the value to minus 0.3. When the camera moves, the exposure values are automatically modified to maintain a constant luminosity but the individual values for ISO and shutter speed are not shown. Beginners generally start by using auto exposure, however, there are two main reasons why it is better to get used to always shooting in manual exposure. When using auto exposure for video, when the overall luminosity of the scene changes, the software will detect it and modify the exposure value. This will lead to a noticeable progressive shift of luminosity in the clip, an evident sign of amateur footage. For similar reasons, I suggest always using manual white balance for video, as in auto mode the difference in luminosity within a clip causes shifts in color. Another reason to use manual exposure is to control the individual exposure parameters. Professional videographers prefer to use a specific shutter speed based on the frame rate on the project. 1 50th of a second when using a frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second, or 1 60th with 30 frames per second. This is known as the 180 degree rule and it is more important when filming close to the ground or when the scene contains element in motion to optimize motion blur. To know more about motion blur, please refer to my specific video by clicking on the link on the screen. When shooting landscape videos with a drone from a high altitude and without element in motion, the 180 degree rule can be disregarded. By tapping on the icon to the right, we access manual mode, labeled as Pro. Then, tapping on the area of the values, slightly to the left, we access the window for exposure. The Mini 4 Pro has a fixed aperture, so the only values we can select are ISO and shutter speed. We can set these values independently. The MM value at the bottom cannot be modified. It displays the luminosity resulting from the values chosen above compared to the optimal exposure computed by the software. I prefer to see a value slightly negative to avoid overexposure. It is preferable to set the ISO at its base value, 100, for best quality whenever possible. But the Mini 4 Pro can handle ISO values up to 400 ISO without any noticeable loss of quality, so we have some room to play with. To maintain a specific shutter speed values with different line conditions, ND filters are needed. 
you will find detail on why and when to use them by clicking on the link on the screen. In the description, you will find links to the one I recommend using. In the exposure window, there are two auto buttons for ISO and shutter speed. So it is possible to set one of the two values to auto. Let's say we want a fixed value for ISO 100 to get the best possible quality. So we set ISO to 100 and shutter speed to auto. As the luminosity varies, only the value for shutter speed changes to maintain the correct luminosity while leaving the ISO to 100. Notice that the MM value has now turned into EV for exposure value and can be modified. If we want control over the shutter speed, we select the desired value and set the ISO to Auto. This time, as the luminosity increases or decreases, only the ISO value varies. We can also choose to put both values to Auto. This is very similar to use auto exposure, but the advantage is that the value for ISO and shutter speed will be shown. When taking photos, there is an extra option to help expose. We can use automatic exposure bracketing to take seven shots in rapid succession with different exposure values. It is a sort of insurance as one of the seven images will be perfectly exposed. In the case of images shot in the direction of the sun, it is possible to merge them to HDR using an editing program. With this technique, the highlights will be taken from the darkest image and the shadows from the brightest one, thus reducing the dynamic range of the resulting merge photo. The program used for processing still images and merging photos to HDR is Luminar Neo. You can watch my video about it by clicking on the link on the screen. You will find info about Luminar Neo in the description, together with a coupon for a 10% discount by entering the code VicVideoPick. Click on this link to watch my video about video quality with the Mini 4 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.